they've been covering up worse problems. Like, for instance, uh, one memo says, um, for the demo, I suggest that you fake it. This is commonplace in the proprietary software world. Um, Microsoft, companies like Microsoft fake demos for products all the time um, and with the assumption that they'll be working in a few months. This is unacceptable when you're talking about voting machines, however. You can't just fake the demo. Yeah. What does it mean to fake a demo? Um, to make a machine look like it's working when it's not really. Faking a demo means that you make the machine look like it's working when it's not really for the purposes of impressing people and making and getting them to trust your machines and buy your product. Yeah, I'm Diebold wants you to trust their machines and their software and without openness in the process, you know, open source code and uh, just and paper trail independent auditing. There's just no way f that we can really trust these machines. And you know, election officials around the country say, um, "Oh, you're you're undermining the voters' faith in elections. You're um, you're you're reducing voter turnout. You're undermining democracy. And you know, you shouldn't have false trust in your elections. You know, um, if." If, that, if that's what we're doing, yes, we are undermining faith in our elections because um, <laughs> you shouldn't have faith in insecure elections. Okay. So <clears throat> the infamous Diebold memos are basically these 13,000 emails in an, in an archive. All the emails that they, the employees sent back and forth to each other um, during the debugging process um, when they were communicating with um, field workers in the field um, running elections. All of these emails were in this single archive. And um, we don't know exactly how the memos escaped, escaped down to the internet. Um, Bev Harris, a, a reporter, was the first person to um, get a hold of them, but it may have been a disgruntled employee, it may have been a hacker, we don't know. Um, and us. Uh, these memos basically revealed that the, that Diebold employees were aware that there were problems and they were trying to cover up the problems. Um, so Bev Harris published the memos on her website blackboxvoting.org and um, it, it got published um, on many sites around the internet. People who were watching these issues, whether because they were you know, anti-Bush and worried that Bush would steal the next election, or whether they were just, you know, whether they were co you know, computer security um, nuts. And, and, uh, but basically everyone who, who cared about security in our elections, you know. And sometimes this is presented as a partisan issue, and it's not really, you know, everyone has an interest in our elections being secure and